everyone. Welcome to Global Collaboration Week. I'm Melissa Inger, and today I'll be sharing a student project called Terra Connect EDU. Last winter, we started a global club at my middle school. We met once a week for about five months, and this morphed into a global citizenship elective class for this school year. While we were still the CMS Global Club, we started our Terra Connect EDU project, which you will see linked on our Google Doc that is connected to the Global Collaboration Week link. On the shared doc, there is um, a website link to take you to Terra Connect EDU, and we have directions built in our website there. On the main page of our website, you'll see this image of the Earth, and it says collect, connect globally. You'll also see other pages called how to participate and then participate, which we'll talk to you about if you would like for your class to participate with us in this project, how to do that. As you scroll down, you're going to see an invitation for global educators to take part in our project with us. You'll find some step-by-step -step directions built into our website for you to follow. And if you scroll down further, you're going to see the example tour that my students built and embedded on this Google map. So you'll see this blue map point on the Google map here. And if you click on that, it will show you a picture of our school from the outside. And then it gives you a link to our tour in Google Tour Builder. What we're hoping is that other classrooms from around the world will be able to build a tour of their school and community and then provide a link for us so we can add it to our map and we can build a group of classrooms that would like to build global connections to work on projects together. So we're going to take a look at the project that my students did and invite you to participate too. So if you click on this hyperlink, it will, you can open a new tab and it, this is the tour that my students built. So Chillicothe, Missouri is the home of sliced bread. We were the first place that commercially sliced bread was made and sold. And so currently we have the sliced bread machine on loan from the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, DC, and it's at our local library. So that was the first picture that we used for our introduction. So you'll notice that in Google Tour Builder, you can add pictures, text, hyperlinks, and all kinds of cool um, features to show people more about what you want to communicate. You'll notice that when I zoomed in on this, that it took us to the map point. You'll notice it's green on the map, and that's where we linked it for our web page. If you take the little orange man and drop him next to on the blue road next to the map point that we added there, you'll see the very place that sliced bread was first made, and it's right here in this building. You'll notice the sign out front, which is a marker, a historical marker, and we included that in one of our pictures too. On our text, you'll notice that some of this is blue, and that means it's hyperlinked to other web pages. And so one of our hyperlinks takes you to the Grand River Historical Society Museum webpage, and they tell you more about the sliced bread machine that's hosted locally in our museum. So we thought that would be a good resource for other students to learn more about our community. Another link that we added was a link from the Smithsonian Institution. And they talk about how they have loaned the machine to us for several years for it to be on display in our museum. And we thought that would be a great resource for other kids around the world to learn more about our community. So we use these things as our introduction on our Google Tour Builder. The next thing is you can exit back to Street View and you can either choose to click next or you can click on the next 
box over here on the left side. And this is the image of the historical marker that we just zoomed in on the map when we did that. So we can zoom in again. And we're still marked with the green map point here. And this is the building where sliced bread was first made and sold. And so this arrows with the four arrows pops out and you can look at the images closer. And that was a picture that we took and it tells you more information there. We also have little free libraries in town and one of them features the logo of Home of Sliced Bread. So families can stop and take free books from the little free libraries to take home and read. Our next thing that we included about our community was the murals. And we have this cool artist, his name is Kelly Poling, and he paints artists, he paints murals throughout our town. And so one of the most popular ones is the Homo Sliced Bread Mural. All of his murals are historical in nature, and they feature different things about our community. This one he just finished recently, and it's across from our county library. A banking mural underneath the kids added captions to tell about the different murals. Whenever we studied this, we looked at street art around the world and compared what art in our community looked like compared to other places around the world. And that was fun for kids to look at the differences and similarities there. Again, if you take, you zoom in, and this time it's the white map point. And if you drop the man down here on the blue road, right by the map point, you can see the home of sliced bread mural there with the Google photo. Right there. Next in our tour, we added our middle school building. Now we are a group of middle school students, but we are welcoming anyone from kindergarten through 12th grade to participate in our project, to upload a tour of your own school and community so we can see what it looks like around the world. So we have an aerial photo here of our middle school building. And we actually have what's called the East Wing and the West Wing. But it's fun to look at what different school buildings look like. And then we give more information in the text box and it hyperlinks to our district website. Next, the students decided to include pictures of our cafeteria and some of the murals that are painted on the wall and a school lunch tray. It's fun for kids to see what different school lunches look like around the world. And this day we happened to have a broken dishwasher, so everything was served on styrofoam. They also chose to include pictures of the gym and weight room to show what it looks like for PE class. And our mascot. They included band and choir. Most of our students choose one or the other as one of their elective classes. They chose to include pictures of the murals in the hallway, which most of them have been painted by students. And we have artwork on display, so that's fun for kids to see the types of artwork that other kids make. We also included some classroom photos to give an idea of what that looks like, the day-to-day -day class schedule for kids and how we offer family and consumer science and our library photo and industrial tech. We also chose to add some technology photos. We recently went one-to-one -one with student Chromebooks, so that was important to our students to include. A 3D printing project that they did where they designed and printed a chessboard using stop motion animation voxels and game design. This we made with a Cricut cutter and they voted on a quote to add to our wall outside of our cafeteria.
and then we decided to add some pictures of people. So we have lots of teacher photos and then a few student photos. This was from the solar eclipse in the fall last year. And then we have an event called CMS Cares Day where students design the t-shirt for the day and all of our middle school students go out into the community to do a community service project. And one of those things was to paint a hornet, which is our mascot on the sidewalks. And so they chose to include the process that they went through to paint that. And then we included some extracurricular photos of the kids. And we want to go back this year and add some more of our fall sports because we made this after the fall season. So on our website, that's linked in our map. So that's our example. And our hope is for other classrooms to include a tour of their school or community on our map too. To do that, we have a page called How to Participate. If you click on that page, it will open with some simple directions of how to participate in our project. We do welcome any class grade level from kindergarten through high school to upload a tour for us. We also included directions. If you're new to how Google Tour Builder works, we embedded a Google slide deck with step-by-step -step directions on how to do that. So we'll walk through how to build a tour in Google Tour Builder, but know that this resource is also here. And if you follow the green arrows and the directions in blue, it will show you how to build a tour. So if you click back to a Google Tour Builder page, it's linked to your Google Gmail account, and you'll have a green, or excuse me, a red create new tour button. And if you give it a tour name, so we can name ours Chilcoffee, Missouri, and then you can give it the author name and click create tour. To add a location and to add photos, you just follow the simple directions on here. So first is your introduction. So we'll say this is an example tour of Chilcoffee, Missouri. a hyperlink, you just select the text that you want to hyperlink, click link, and then drop in a copy of the URL to do that. To add a photo, simply click on add a photo, and you can choose from your Google Drive, or you can search for an image on Google. So I could look for Chilcoffee, Missouri photos. We'll see what shows up here. This is the famous rocket slide in Chillicothe. It's located at Simpson Park, and generations of families know about this tour. So we could say, this is the famous rocket slide in Chillicothe. Then to add a location, we can click on the blue button, and we could look for the address of our school is 1519 Calhoun. I typed Calhoun twice. And it will add a map point for you. So you just click Add to Tour. And then you can upload photos up to 25 or videos that tell more about your site that you're marking here. And you can also search for images here. So I can try Chillicothe, Missouri again. If you already have photos that you've taken like we did with our tour, you can upload those from your Google Drive. So this is an old railroad station photo, but we can use it as an example. Now, if you want, you can add start dates and end dates. If you're doing a historical tour, you might want to have a timeline on there. You can add text for there for your picture to describe what's going on. 
You can also change the icon. For example, I had green, white, and blue map points on my tour, but you can click here and you can choose a custom icon to mark your place on the map. You can also center your place mark or lock the view that you want it to start in when other people view your tour. The text options have your traditional options of bold, italics, underline, and paragraphing styles that you would probably see other places too. You can also edit your photos here if you want to add a title or a description. This is a great place for captions if your students are learning how to write some nonfiction pieces and they want to caption the photos that they're adding to their tour. If for some reason you add a picture that you don't want, you can just click the trash can and you can delete that photo. If you have multiple photos in there, it will only delete the photo that you're currently on. So again, you can drop the little yellow man and to end up a blue street somewhere. And you can see this is actually an older photo of our school back when our three story high school building used to be here, which has been torn down. So this is a much older photo of the building. But it's fun for kids to go in and look at things up close. Then all you have to do is click the blue add location button each time you want to add another feature. So we added some for our mural locations. We added one for the place that sliced bread was invented and we added one for our middle school building, but you could add as many as you want. When you're done editing, you can just, you can use save now at any time, but you can click done editing and that's what it will look like. Now you can zoom in and out with the plus and minus signs on the map and you can see our location relative to other major cities and states but you can also zoom way in. You can also scroll with your mouse to go in and look at the terrain. And see more about what Chillicothe looks like. And although knowing that some of those photos are older, you can also share your tour. And this is what you'll need if you'd like to participate in our project, because we want you to share this link of where your tour is located. Back on our website, all of this is step-by-step -step laid out for you in the How to Participate tab. When you're ready, you can go to the Participate tab, and there is a Google form there. And it shows you step-by-step -step how to participate. And if you scroll down after it loads, there is a Google form embedded here, except mine's already filled out. But it would ask you for the link from your tour, which is here, and we would want you to change the ownership, or excuse me, the access to anyone who has the link and copy and paste this into the Google form. And this is what you would submit. And then we would place that on our homepage on the map. The Google form asks you for your location. And so then we could embed that down on our map. So you would submit your address. And once my page loads here, we would add your location to our map. And then you would have a map point too. Our goal is to connect classrooms from around the world. We want you to be able to see what lots of different communities look like, but we also want to have a database that teachers can search by grade level or by continent to find another classroom to connect with. And they might want to connect with an academic project that they are working on or blogging buddies or even to work on a sustainable development goal from the United Nations to help conquer one of those things. So 
If you have questions at any time, on the bottom of our website are links to my email, and you can click on the envelope icon to reach me that way, or reach out via Twitter. This will take you to my Twitter page, or G+, if you'd like to follow us that way. And so our project is paraphonet.edu. If you have questions at any time, please reach out and ask. We would love to connect with you.